and if you get a new cable box from Comcast or if you upgrade uh, you need a new remote control you're likely to get this remote control so if you're stuck with it you need to know how to use it well when you get your remote control it does come with a, a little fold out brochure that's kind of designed to tell you how to use the remote control but it's painfully inadequate it doesn't even mention most of the buttons on the remote it doesn't tell you how they work um, it just gives you basic information on uh, you know how to turn your TV on and off and that's about it so for those of you that uh, need a little bit of help I wanted to go a little bit further for you now I don't want to get into real depth on this I'm not going to get into the advanced functions we're not going to talk about the DVR um, we're just going to talk about the basic remote functions so I'm going to start up at the top of the remote control if you start in the top right hand corner is the power button obviously that's going to turn your TV on and off in the top left hand corner is a button I want to warn you about this is one you want to be very careful with this is your TV input button when you press that TV input button in the top left hand corner of the remote control you're going to get a menu on your TV screen it'll either say source or input or something along that line now where you need to be careful is if you press this input button again while that menu is on the screen it will change which input your TV is connected to so by pressing that button twice if you do that by accident when you're trying to change volume you're going to be on the wrong input you're no longer going to be able to watch TV okay now right below the TV input button is the volume button that's going to be pretty obvious it says VOL for volume and there's an up arrow to put the volume up there's a down arrow to put the volume down to the right of the volume button is a mute button you press the mute button and obviously it silences whatever's on the TV. Now this is very handy if the phone rings or if the neighbor knocks on your door and you want a little bit of quiet, you just press the mute button and it will quiet the TV. Now to the right of the mute button is the channel button. Again, this is kind of obvious. It's CH for channel. There's an up arrow to change the channel up and a down arrow to change the channel down. Okay, now the buttons below the volume and the channel button these are, are DVR function buttons so a lot of you may think that they don't apply to me if I don't have a DVR well however they actually do right below the volume button there's a, a back arrow button that's a rewind button if you have the XR15 remote control and the X1 cable box you can actually rewind live TV so if I've missed what the uh, what the person said a few minutes ago I can rewind then to the right of the rewind button I can hit the play and it will replay what I've already watched. Okay? Now, let's say I, I've missed the punchline, I rewind, I hear the punchline, and I want to go back to live TV. I can either hit the fast forward button, which is this button to the right of the, the play button, or I can just hit exit, and that will take me back to live TV. So that gets me on to uh, the next button here, exit, below the rewind button. That is a button that you will use quite often that will get you out of just about anything you get yourself into so if you're in the advanced features and you need to get out you hit exit if you're in the guide and you want to get back to regular TV you hit exit um, pretty much if you get anywhere where you don't know what you're doing hit exit and it'll get you out of it okay below the exit button is probably my favorite button on the remote control it's the guide button now Comcast is really pushing for you to use the voice remote and that's what all their advertising is about and, and that's what all the hype is but for me the guide button is the best when you press the guide button you get a TV guide on your screen not only does it tell you what's on right now and you can go up and down based on these arrows in the middle of the remote control and I'll get into them a little bit more in a moment um, but you can also go into the future so if I want to know what's on at six o'clock tonight I push this right arrow button a few times and it'll take me to six o'clock tonight and when I want to get back to the current program I just hit the back arrow the left arrow until I get back to where I was now once I'm into the TV guide I can also use these arrows to go up and down channel by channel but there's also up here these buttons aren't labeled and if you didn't play with it a little bit or have somebody tell you you wouldn't know what these are these are actually page up and down so instead of going through this line by line I can skip through about five lines at a time so if I'm just scrolling through the guide to see what I'm looking for tonight I can go through and find out what's on and uh, I can scroll through this pretty quickly and then I find a program I want to watch and I hit OK to watch this program now the problem is there's no button on this remote control marked OK you're supposed to be able to figure this out on your own this round circle right in the middle here it looks to me like a baseball diamond right in the middle there there's a little round circle that's the OK button 
By pressing that OK button, that takes you to whatever program you wanted to watch. Okay. So, to the next, to the right of the guide button, is a button that says Xfinity. This used to be what's called Menu. If you hit the Xfinity button, it will bring up a menu across the bottom of your screen. And this will do different things. You can go into the guide, you can go into save programs, you can go into On Demand, um, you can go into apps, and this has things like the sports app and the weather app, or settings, and this is how you change settings on your, on your TV. Again, I don't want to get into real advanced things, so I'm going to stay out of that for right now. Now I'm in this menu and I want to get out, so I go back to, like I said, we're going to hit exit and we're going to get out of there. That takes me back to live TV. Okay. Now, another thing about the guide button before I go too much further, there's a, a really handy feature in here. When you first press the guide button, you bring the menu up on the screen, the guide up on the screen. If you press that guide button again, it's going to give you some options. You can watch only HD channels, you can watch all channels, or what I like is free to me. So I highlight free to me, and then I press again the OK button in the middle of the remote control. Now when I scroll up and down the guide, it only shows programs that I subscribe to. So this works out really great if you don't have absolutely every channel available. You don't have to scroll through a lot of programming that you don't have access to anyway. Now in the middle of the remote control, again, we've got this uh, baseball diamond looking thing. If you feel this, you can feel some texture. It's not real obvious just looking at what these are. But again, there's an up arrow, a down arrow, a left arrow, and a right arrow. Those are for scrolling through the guide or, or through different things that you would do. So again, if we want to page up through the guide, we use the page up button, or we can go up line by line. And we get back to whatever we want to watch, and uh, we hit the OK button, and it takes us back. Now around the baseball diamond, if you look real close, there's going to be four letters here, A, B, C, and D. Now A is a help button. So if you need help learning how to use your remote control, for example, you press the A button, and it brings up different options. If you're having trouble with your cable box, the first thing that's highlighted is restart. If I press the OK button, I'm going to restart my cable box. It gives me information about system and remote setups. It gives me X1 tips and tricks. Um, it gives you a lot of different options in here, and again, I don't want to get real deep involved in this. These are things that you can look at for yourself, but again, that's the letter A will take you into the help menu. So I want to go back, I'm going to hit exit, and it takes me out of here. Now the letter B, as in boy, will bring up some settings. These are the accessibility settings, so if you need closed captioning, or if you want voice guidance, um, you know, these types of things can be done in here under the letter B. So if I want the closed close captioning on, I go up to closed captioning. It's off right now. If I press the OK button, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, press the OK button and it turns it on. Um, press the OK button again and it's going to turn it off. Okay? So let's get out of here. I'm not going to get in real deep in that either. If you need those settings, you'll know what to do with them. Now down in the bottom left-hand corner of the, the diamond here is the letter C as in Charlie that's going to bring you up some apps. So it's going to bring up the sports app. It's going to tell me uh, what last night's sports scores were, or today's sports score if the games are active right now. So for the sports fans, you may love that. You can still watch TV and see your sports scores. So we're going to exit out of that. The last one I'm not going to press, the letter D. This is a second audio track. This allows you or allows the broadcasters actually to broadcast their programming in two audio tracks. So one could be English, the other one could be dead air, or it could be Spanish, or it could be French, depending on where you are in the country. Now when you're going to use this most, unless you're bilingual and you're switching back and forth between languages, if you accidentally at some point find yourself watching the news and it's all in Spanish, if you press the letter D, it will take you back to the English audio track. Now another great feature of the X1 system and um, it's kind of lost on this remote control, is the ability to watch the last program that you watched. Now, years ago, most remote controls had a button that said last, and you hit last, and it took you to the last program. Well, with the Xfinity last button, when you press it, you actually get the last nine channels that you watched. The nice thing here is if you're somebody like me who just likes to kind of scroll up and down through channels and you're trying to find the best program on right now, this will allow you to go back a couple of... Uh, a couple of programs ago and pick the channel you want and you press the OK button. Now the tricky thing about this is 
there is no button on this remote control marked as last. You're supposed to be able to figure this out on your own again. There's an arrow down here to the left of the blue microphone. There's an arrow pointing to the left. That's the last button. Now another feature of X1 that they, they tout a lot and they love is that um, you can get info on the program that's on the screen. On prior remote controls there was a button that said info. Of course the XR15 has no button that says info. You're supposed to figure this out. Well right here there's a button that looks like an upside down exclamation point. It's actually a lowercase i. That stands for info. If you press the i you will get info on the current program on your screen. Um, also, if you were to press the down arrow, it's going to give you the cast that's in this particular program. And if you want to see more information on, or another program with the same person, you highlight whichever person you want to see and you press the OK button and it will let you know if they're available in any other programming right now. Okay, so again, we're not going to get real deep into this. This is something you can play with on your own. I'm going to hit X and I'm going to go back to regular TV. Now the bottom of the remote control are the, the numbers. Just like any other remote control, if you want to watch channel 800, you press 800. The only difference with X1 is you have to then press OK if you want to go to channel 800. The reason for that is you can also use these numbers for a search function. I'm not going to get into that right now. Now the last thing we want to talk about, and this is again the one that Comcast seems to think is the most important button on the remote control, I rarely use it, is the blue microphone. The blue microphone allows you to speak to your remote control. So the one thing that I do use it for is when I want to see what today's weather is. If you press the microphone down and hold it and say weather, the weather will come up on your screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it, I'm going to hold it, I'm going to say weather, and you'll watch what happens. Weather. Okay, so it recognized the word weather. Now the weather app takes a, a few seconds to load, but it'll load here in a moment and we're going to see the weather on the bottom of the screen. This microphone button can also be used for changing channels. So if I want to watch channel 820, I can press a button and I can say channel 820. Or, and there's my weather. Again, it takes a few seconds for that to load, but that tells me the current weather in York, Pennsylvania. So I'm going to hit exit and get out of that. Now again, I, I can push a button and I can say a channel number. I can say channel 820. Or I can say NBC Evening News. I push the button, hold it down, say NBC Evening News. And if NBC Evening News is on, it'll take me to it. Otherwise, it'll give me the option to remind me later when it does come on. This button allows you to do some other things as well. Let's say, for example, you uh, wanted to see a Sandra Bullock movie, but you couldn't remember the name of the movie. You could press this button, say Sandra Bullock, and every program that's currently available that she stars in will come up on your screen, and then you can search through and find the, the movie that you're looking for. Or let's say you, uh, you really want to watch a movie and you remember the punchline, but you can't remember the name of the movie. Um, you press the button, you hold it down, you say the punchline, and it will automatically search the movie for you. So for example, there's no place like home. Okay, the computer recognized there's no place like home, and it brings up The Wizard of Oz. So I have the choice here of either uh, renting or buying The Wizard of Oz, and I'm not interested in buying The Wizard of Oz when it's played repeatedly every year, but um, that's available to you. Now, again, this brings up some of the other functions available on demand and uh, the purpose uh, or purchase options through pay-per-view. Now, I'm going to show you on demand. I'm not going to get into pay-per-view, but uh, again, I don't want to go real long on this. I just wanted to give you some basic functions. But On Demand is a feature that allows you to watch some of your favorite network programming when you want to. So if you missed last night's program, you can watch it On Demand. To get to On Demand, you press the menu button or Xfinity. You use the right arrow key, get to On Demand, and press OK. And when you get in here, you have options. You can either watch TV shows, you can watch movies, you can watch kids programming, sports. So um, it, it, it narrows this down for you. So um, we're going to go to TV shows. And we're going to scroll down and let's say um, we missed The Village last night. I have no idea what that is, but if I wanted to watch The Village, I go to The Village and I hit the OK button and it's going to bring up what episodes of that program that are available. Okay, so I want to get out of this. So I just hit exit and it'll take me out. 
Now there's another nice thing that this voice front, uh, button does do for you and this is one that uh, my wife loves and, and you may love it as well. If you press the button and say for example free movies it's going to bring up a list of available movies that are free to me. So if I don't want to pay for a movie and I don't want to get hooked on a, a, I find a movie that I really love and find out that there's a $39.99 charge for it to purchase um, I can go into just free movies and this will allow me to see movies that I can watch for free that these are, are channels or programs that I already subscribe to. Okay. So again this is just a, a very introductory, there, there's a lot more that this remote control can do um, I just wanted to give you a very introductory uh, lesson on the real basic functions. It'll give you a chance to play with it a little bit and find out which of these functions you like and which you don't. When you find the functions you like, take it a little bit further. See what else it'll do. Um, not only does it bring up on demands, it also brings up pay-per-views and free movies and there's a lot of different things you can do with the remote. Um, I just thought that um, the design on it is, in my opinion, again, it's bad. It's not very user friendly. Um, they want me to use the voice button, but it's down here where it's not convenient to reach. Um, when my hand here, this is like the most easy places for me to reach. Down here is awkward. But anyway, those are my opinions. Um, your opinion may be very different than that. But I wanted to give you just some basic information on how the remote control works. Um, and I didn't want to go too long on this video. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you. If it did, uh, please like it. Please share with your friends. Thanks. Bye.